Hello and welcome everybody, I'm Papa Bavarian and this is Crusader Kings 2 and we of course return here as Maharaja Toramana. And nobody cared who he was before he put on the mask, you know what, he has worked relentlessly, he has worked for such a long time until he would finally be mentioned. You know, he networked, he developed his self-esteem, he ate some children here, uh, may have sacrificed one or two dwarves. I mean, what's the difference at this point? You know, we have progressed so far. When we started as this character, we were in Mordavasaka, and now we are the ruler of Gujarat and I believe, uh, yeah, Rajputana. It is not what I thought to be Malwa. Malwa is still, of course, at least partially, I guess, under the control of the Pratihara dynasty uh, with exactly one county. Now, what I will do in this, you know, rest of the campaign, I suppose is essentially live my best life and I'm gonna look around I'm gonna take a look around at what we can do here uh, currently we are of course under this beautiful beautiful agnatic elective situation now the good thing about this is that my vassals actually love me my vassals are very positive about me so I don't think we're gonna have too many issues but let's just figure out what I can do shall we Ooh, interesting. You have received a visitor, an emissary from the famous university at Nalanda. He tells you of the research and other work they do there, and offers you a formal invitation to visit and see the marvel of Bihar. Interesting. I will accept the invitation. Absolutely. Let's check that out. I've never had that event. I mean, ooh, I will tell you that much. But I assume that this is essentially like the Abbey of Cluny, right? And Nalanda. You have arrived at the magnificent university of Nalanda. It's a massive complex of red brick buildings, busy with a bustle of scholars and monks. You have been told that people come here from all over India and beyond in order to study and exchange ideas. The library has a huge amount of text in every language known to men. It's an impressive place. You don't have much time to spend here, however, so you need to decide what to do. I could focus on stewardship learning or... Ooh. I would prefer not getting zealous, although I will tell you that I actually like the idea of getting some purity. I may have some plans, but I think we're gonna go with learning here, right? I, I think I will spend a few days in the library. Let's just check it out. Yep, we actually got the point. Very nice. You know, after we've done all of this networking, after we have risen up to the top of the network, I think it's time to take the network to the next level, because if you can't go any higher in the network, then the entire network needs to go higher. So what we're going to do is, we're going to focus on scholarship, and then we're going to build an observatory. I've heard that they're, you know, at least that is exactly what they say in the west of this country, or rather in the west of the world, they say there is a man in the sky that looks down upon us and says you are good and you are evil, and I wanna, I wanna see him. You know, let's just check him out with our new observatory. You spend many nights looking at the stars in your observatory. It is truly fascinating. There's so many questions to ask. Um, we could either look at the stars or how do things move out there. You know what? Is there something strange out there? Tell me about it. Maybe it is the man in the sky. I don't know. Let's find out. Alright, so this is pretty massive. The price of decadence. The ruling dynasty of the Abbasid Empire has been overthrown by the zealous and hard-living tribesmen of the Mushlihidin dynasty. Their decadent empire has been toppled, freeing any vassals from their bondage to the unwor uh, unworthy caliph. With the empire gone, time will tell if the, a worthy dynasty will be up to the task of restoring authority in the region. I mean... Still a lot of authority in that region, I would argue, but... Interesting. Okay, so we have a new caliph, and it is... Yeah, they took the title of the Abbasids there. Caliph Mushlihidin the Conqueror. Oh, look at that. The use of dark magic has corrupted me. The dark tendrils of Kali Pur uh, Purusha's magic has invaded my body, eroding mind and muscle alike. It is obvious that Kali Purusha is keeping me alive, but at what cost? Ooh, at what cost indeed, I must ask. Observing the stars at night, you have begun to sense m uh, some irregular movements. You also notice that some stars seem to appear and disappear at odd times. You need to study this more. That star there disappears when I look directly at it. I will become paranoid and might even become diligent. I did! Oh, that is great! I am diligent! Look at that! I love it! I really, really do. And you know what? Looking at the stars really made me wonder, what is it all about? What is life all about? And it turns out there is some man in the sky and that ma a man turns out to be the Nestorian God. Nestorianism is an early Christian branch which states that Christ has two separate natures, one divine and one human. This is the opposite of the monophysite uh, position where Christ has but a single nature. The nominal head of the Nestorian Church is the Patriarch of the East. Well, we are in the very far East, so I think... You know what? The stars told me there's a man in the sky and I shall serve him and of course all of you shall also serve him. Can I... Make all of you a, a bit more interested here. There's no... None of these people appear to be quite interested in converting, but I think we can make this happen. There you go. The Nestorian realm has been born, and you don't want to, huh? Alright, look at that. The Nestorians are coming along. That's quite nice. I can't complain about it. You, of course, also must convert to Nestorianism. Uh, we're Christians now, and I'll be honest with you, I think we're going to stay Christians the rest of this playthrough. We might actually go Zunus, but let's be real. After the Grand Campaign, I mean, we've all seen, you know... Zunist perfection and Zunist gameplay, so I'm not too worried about that. Yeah, alright, most uh, of the important ones he actually converted, so that's already a huge victory for us. 
The re research you conduct in your observatory at night is proving deeply fascinating. You could push your studies further, but you'd need to purchase more equipment for it to be meaningful. Uh, okay, I, I'm gonna move forward, sure, but I will also tell you, um, I got some other plans as well. We're just gonna go ahead and convert anyone that we, you know, still need to convert. And then we're actually going to start spreading the new word that I found and, you know, have indeed now upgraded my network. Uh, I'm, I'm wondering, by the way, I'm not entirely certain. Can I remain in this cult despite not being part of the Eastern religious group anymore? I mean, who's gonna kick me out, right? I'm the leader. Let's be honest here. And you, by the way, the Marathi company, you're going to be the next one, huh? Hmm. In the meantime, uh, Count Kazak, the Conqueror of Purushapura, I think I'm going to declare war against you. He came from all the way up there, man. That is a long way just to lose your country right away. Gandhara shall be ours. Do I need to pay something? No, okay, I actually gained piety out of this. Of course I do. And I think I'm going to push this immediately. We should have a pretty decent time, honestly. Like, I don't see how he could possibly defeat us. Although, you never know. I love, by the way, the sun. Although, if I'm not mistaken... Is this centrist? Yeah, I think it's actually central. Okay, I, I, I thought it was slightly to the left, but I'm not entirely certain. Either way, I like the new symbol. I like the new sigil, and it will, of course, remain our permanent one. And now is the time to just beat up this adventurer. Somebody has to do it. The studies you have conducted in your observatory have convinced you that there are many strange things beyond the unknown co cosmos. There are few sources and no one to share knowledge with you, however. But you have heard of a strange old scholar in the Arabian desert who is rumored to possess vast knowledge of the weird. I will go and see him. You know what? Sure. I'm not sure that I'm actually going to get the Necronomicon because this is exactly what that is, but I will most certainly get to the scholar. I'm not a coward. Uh, maybe he can upgrade my network to a point where I can actually make something meaningful happen. Um, I'm going to give you a part of what I just conquered. I will, of course, keep nothing of it. And then I'm going to make you convert, as you should. Uh, let's, let's take a look at this. You are grown up now and you hate me because you're not on the council. Well, I can help you with that. At least I think I can. Do I have to give you money to make this happen? Come on, man. Don't be so greedy. Yeah, weirdo. Yeah, everybody convert. Wasn't there one, one more person? Oh, yeah, this guy. I'm going to give you the other county that I just conquered and that should be fine. Now everybody is converted. Beautiful. That's a dream. Alright, here you go. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna shift this towards a uh, levy base because once we've shifted it towards levy base, we're now in a situation where I can actually raise quite a considerably higher amount of troops and I think that will definitely aid us, especially if we are going to go against Sultan Hissam II and I think we will. I mean, they of course could aid, you know, maybe Zabulistan as well, but I think we should be uh, we should be able to do this quite quickly and not just that, we should be able to take this huge chunk of land. I mean, it's gigantic. And he's not being supported by anyone either, so I think this is a I think this is a sound move. Uh, if it really doesn't work out, I will definitely be uh, able to just hire some mercenaries, I suppose. But I think we'll be fine. Let's do this. You arrive at the abode of the strange old scholar Ibrahim. After some persuasion, he invites you in. You speak at length, and he tells you of the scholar Abdul the Mad, who knew many things of the strange spheres beyond, and of talking uh, talking beings that are not human. You find out that Abdul the Mad wrote a book called the Necronomicon, in which he recorded many strange and unholy truths. Ibrahim says that he is an impressed uh, he is impressed by your sincerity and desire for knowledge. He can sell you a copy of the book. He tells you to be uh, b uh, to beware, however, as too much intense study of the Necronomicon is said to drive the reader insane. Well. I think we're already there. You know what? I'm gonna take it just because we're already there. It's it just fits this character so well. The Necronomicon is essentially the business bible, business 101 for this fella here. Maybe you know also, <laughs> maybe it's just Scientology. I don't know anymore. <laughs> Nothing in this society makes sense, but it has helped us so far. So like, I'm not against it, right? How could I? The book you bought from the strange desert scholar has proven quite useful for gaining new ideas and insights in your studies of the stars and what lies beyond. It does, however, contain some quite disturbing texts and images, things that lead towards a level of understanding that might make one mad. Ah, oh, that sucks. I really wanted this character to be mad. He was such an ideal candidate, you know, to become an absolute lunatic, crazy, possessed, everything in between, and instead he gets none of them. But there you go. Okay, this one will definitely be one, just for the record. Nobody came in, nobody helped him. I actually captured him. And with that, I uh, oust you. You are just banished to Visionard now. Everything else is in my possession. And I will, of course, hand all of this stuff out. I'm not really interested in actually holding it. I mean, it, it do just doesn't really matter to me. With these settings that we have for vessels here, we are do going to do be doing fine, I think. I'm simply going to go ahead and just hand it out, you know, to the already existing dukes, so that all of them are somewhat strong. Great wisdom comes to those who study the world and learn from it. Your studies of the stars and other things beyond this world have taken you on a very strange path, and your learning has increased immeasurably since you started. Can you not network with God? 
Is, isn't like, you know, praying and talking to Jesus and whatnot and talking to the priests, isn't that networking with God? Man, this is the highest level of network and I'm so excited that Cult of Kali Purusha accepts this new influence from the Nestorians. That is very, very cool. Alright, and I think it's time that we move towards Zabulistan. Satrap Rumafuda II, son of Shaitan, of course, you know, he is surrounded by people that are actually of his religion, Sunni people, but... I think we can figure that out. I'm gonna do my best if we lose it, I mean, so be it, you know, it, it happens from time to time. Sometimes you win some battles, sometimes you lose some battles, hopefully, oh, okay, wait a minute. Oh, yeah, okay, I don't wanna do that, no, 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 I take it back. Is this an, uh, yeah, Sultana Perma, so that would be you. Um, alright, that makes things a bit more static up there, I would call it. Let's just take out the other fellas here that are in our way currently. It does, of course, also give me free piety, so I'm not gonna complain about it. Wow, they actually killed... They actually killed my son. They they massacred my boy. Look at him. Look at what they did to him. This random guy killed my son. Uh, have you ever been tainted touched? Because now you have been. And you, my son. Um, I'm just going to do something very convenient. I'm going to grant you this. And then I'm going to grant you the other thing. And then everybody will be happy. Eh? You, you can figure it out. He is a bit over the vassal limit. That's not going to do him well. But we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Oh, a free retinue. Thank you. So oh, this is not a retinue, huh? Well, either way, this is just a, this is a weird situation, but I'll take it. They killed my son! You're finally certain, absolutely certain. There are things you understand now that lie beyond the can of normal men. If they know, uh, if they knew, oh, if they knew. But it is the task of scholars such as you to keep and preserve such things in secret, lest all humanity go insane with the knowledge of its own insignificance. I shall be a devoted keeper of elder secrets. I think we talked to God. You know what he told us? He told us, sweet mask! And now we are even more respected. I love it. Can I already change my focus just for the record? Oh, I actually can. Why don't we? I don't know actually what we should be focusing on here. I'm definitely, by the way, if I get the immortality event, I'm saying no. We already had one immortal ruler. We're good. I don't need a second one. I think we're just going to go to war, I suppose. I mean, honestly, I'm not quite certain here. Family doesn't really hit it. I'm, I'm just going to stay on scholarship. I think it fits the best. All right, now I have decided, now that nobody is anymore voting for my dear, dear children, or rather for the last remaining... Wait, it's not even my son, it's my grandson. Now that nobody's voting for my grandson, I think I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to destroy one kingdom tier title, which is Rajputana. Because down here, there's barely anybody that has the right to vote. And those that have the right to vote, I mean, it's me and my son, or rather my grandson. So, this is a splendid situation as far as I'm concerned. We're just gonna go ahead, we're gonna push that over there, and then we're gonna carry on here. This, this should be quite... Quite alright, quite frankly. Oh, and there you go. Good thing I destroyed the Kingdom Titan, because otherwise I would have straight up lost it. We are now Shah Toramana II of Gujarat. And would you look at that? I'm, I died at 74. I mean, we had a great life. We had an actually amazing life. And we are, of course, still in this Holy War here, which will be successful. But that aside, we are finally a normal person again. I am also a secret giant. And let me just check. We are not in a secret society. So we aren't, you know, like, potentially going on and on about, you know, being one of those people that tried to convert everybody back to giant. I am depressed, but I'm going to ban the giant just for the record here. And uh, we're depressed, we're stressed, we're content, we're shy, deceitful, kind, and a brilliant strategist. We hold a lot of duchies that I shall hand out. And uh, once we've done that, I'm going to take a look at a position here. Yeah, you get Bakar. Actually, now that I look at it, we're gonna be slightly over the vassal limit, but I think I can push up the vassal limit as we go here. Um, yeah, okay, so what we're gonna do is, I'm going to give my son, he's only five years old, and that is okay, I'm going to give him all of this nonsense here, so that he may hold it underneath him, and yeah, that's the wrong one, you need this one, there you go, wonderful. We live in a realm that has been terrorized by some weird activities by my grandfather, I don't even think that this fella here knows his grandfather all that well, or well, knew his grandfather all that well, I mean, at the end of the day, who knows the grandfather all that well anyway. Uh, I hope that my son will actually vote for himself. That's the dream. We are at 7 out of 7. We are at 1 out of 1. I'm going to move one more council lord just so that we can actually go ahead and make sure that, you know, I have vassal limit reached uh, for quite some time to go. Revoke the Mazapanad of Tavakra. I do not care about that. Get out of here. I have no intention to actually revoke that. Okay. What is important to me here quite uh, immediately practically I just want to take care of my son. That's what I do. I'm his dad. I'm depressed. I'm stressed. I'm content. I'm shy. I'm deceitful. I'm kind. And I'm a skilled tactician. But I am his father. And we're going to take a look at the ambition here. Strengthen the Nestorian religion. We're at 29. Oh, that should be pretty easy, actually. Alright, yeah, sure. Um, I just need to... What do I need to do? Like, build a church or something, right? 
Win a holy war. Oh, we're winning a holy war right now. This is easy. Okay, set a crown focus over here. Of course I will do that. We're gonna stick with the focus, maybe. Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna go rulership. After our grandfather was such a strange ruler, uh, we're going to stabilize the realm. We're going to stabilize our rules simply by carrying on here. Oh, I can tell. You're coming for me, aren't you? Um, that's troublesome. And oh god, we're gonna see a battle here. And this might actually be a loss. It's just a temporary setback if we were to lose because we got some more troops coming, but... How was this not a river crossing, by the way? It doesn't really matter. Um, I'm gonna make you kind. Don't become frail. Oh, good bet. Look at that. That's the stuff for you. What? Excuse me? Wait, what are you declaring war for? Mujlihidin, a holy war for Makran. Are you okay? Uh, alright. Khalif. Have you ever just sat down and thought to yourself, today I'm going to have a very normal run. Today I'm going to do everything in my power to just kind of feel it. You know, what it was like to be, for example, a Jainist. For example, the last remaining white Hun down here, you know, of the Hunas dynasty, of course, in uh, Mohadava Saka. And then all of a sudden you turn out to be the Nestorian Saka. Oh, and I'm Saka again. That's actually amazing. God bless this grandson of ours to be uh, Saka because that actually changes a lot for us. We can remain now in the original culture. But, you know, have you ever, like, taken a look at that and said to yourself, something didn't work out quite right? And at the end of the day, maybe that is a lesson for all of us that, you know, bending over backwards to do, you know, everything that is related to networking will lead to you being club-footed. Maybe even ugly, maybe even possessed and stressed out. You know, that is... Uh, that is networking in a nutshell, isn't it? But now we are Shah Toramana the second. We are pretty, you know, okay person. We haven't had too much fun in our lives so far, but, you know, we have a decent sun down here. Of course, Satrap Huyi. And I hope that I can have a couple of more... Oh, right, we're in a story, so I can only have one wife now. There are... There's nothing else, and I think she's cheating on me. God damn it. But we're going to do our best to make some things happen here. The Caliph, for some reason, declared war against us. I don't know yet. Um, our empire is in a special state. I hope that we can bring it into a good state. That is my goal, really. <laughs> so it turns out, when you play with quartered vassal size, since every single feudal realm is, and Ikta realm, I suppose, is completely bound by the fact that they are running out of space for the vassals, uh, it appears that nomads are incredibly, incredibly strong. Kagan, Papachish, the handsome. Good for you, first of all. But second of all, <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, he just took over. And I don't know how to react to that. I will tell you that much. I think that is exactly what I know. I have fatigue. That's okay. Um, it's a weird campaign. And I can already tell you that I'm definitely never going to do quartered vessels ever again. But I mean, it's going well for us. You know, I'm doing, I'm doing quite fine. We're doing all right. And I hope that I can continue this. But at the same time, a uh, bit of a weird one. Imagine being the caliph of the Muslim faith. <laughs> Imagine being that caliph, and then you just keep annoying this random realm over here in India. For what reason, you ask? Well, absolutely no reason. Well, finally, you have been defeated, and actually, I never checked. Yeah, he's not a Said. he's also decadent. Man, the Muslim faith is in a weird spot after the uh, Abbasids actually lost it all. Either way, we can now, you know, kind of look towards the future, and I have strengthened the Nestorian religion. Let's groom an heir. I would love some more children as well. You know, we only have one son, but he is... Oh, God. He's already cancer. Are you kidding me? Uh, isn't he, like, the last... Oh, my God. Where's the rest of my family? Excuse me. Um, That's a bit problematic, I, I reckon. Yeah, you... None of you have anything. Why don't you marry someone in a matrilineal marriage? Because I need children. Oh, and that is interesting. A Massalian ruler. Really, a Massalian ruler is genuinely something somewhat interesting to me. Maybe at some point we should become, you know, Massalian ourselves, but for the moment it's all fine. I'm just trying to make my family survive here. Uh, let's destroy this rebellion. I don't know where they're heading. Oh. Oh. More spawned in for this rebellion, I understand. Alright, so the way I see it, we brought peace to the region. We fought off the Caliph, who for some reason came over here. We are now threatened, of course, by the Horse Lords, but not at the moment. I think we're going to be doing fine. A and I will be continuing in our conquest here. We have brought peace to this region in general, of course, but I think we can bring peace to an even greater region. And now I'm thinking, um, is that still part of the kingdom? Yeah, that is part of Delhi. So, like, I actually require that kingdom... Although, I likely won't actually have the manpower to do that, so you know what, let's forget about that for a moment. You, my dear friend, I would love to take you out. They're all Saka up here, so like, these are the people that I'm looking for anyway, right? We, we need to go up to Kotan and take that land over. So what I'm thinking is, maybe we just want to kind of keep pushing there, although, you know what? If I keep pushing in here, how strong are you? 
3.34k. I mean, that's not that strong, actually, now that I think about it. But he is Hindu, so I assume people are going to come to his aid. Man, that's a weird one. This is a really weird one. We have such a huge Hindu front towards us here. Maybe I'm going to simply destroy you. I think that's really what we're going to do here. Sure, I'm going to take you down. Let's teach him a lesson. Let's make it clear that we are the new regional power and let's take down the entirety of the coast. And there you go. We now have cleaned up the entirety of the west here. And we are, of course, still looking at a position where we are not able to actually create an empire. But my god, we are incredibly, incredibly powerful. Yeah, as you can see, Rajasthan, I mean, we need some more land over here. Then a lot more land here from the Ayutthaya dynasty. But at the moment, I think that is a bit difficult, seeing as they are actually stronger than we are. And I don't want to mess with that, I'll be honest with you. What I do want to mess with, though, and... I think that is actually quite interesting. Maybe I want to shift towards legalism because then I can get rid of, you know, elective. I mean, elective is honestly almost as good. I mean, just look at this. The only voters in Gujarat are myself and my son. And I think we're going to continue that tradition, you know, making it so that my son is the most important part in this equation. I dislike that he is cancer, but I mean, he can live with that for, you know, a couple of ages, I suppose. I'm going to go and marry my daughters off. They, are, of course, themselves are completely excluded from ever inheriting this, seeing as this is purely agnatic, but they can have offspring that can do it. And I'm thinking, man, my borders are so good. Look at these cute borders. But you know what I really noticed is that if we play with large vassals, and I just want to explain this, why I think quartered shouldn't even be in the game. When I play with large vassals, that makes it so that I can actually raise the adequate amount of troops that, you know, I desire, that I require. Now, if you look at that, you will see that his vassal troops are so, so low because he's over it. And that is something that you can see everywhere. You can even see that this fella here is impossibly, in, he's in no position to ever resist against his new horse overlords. And the reason being, of course, he is getting... 219 vassal troops because he has 23 out of 8 vassals. I personally can cope very, very well with the fact that I have to deal with an issue of, you know, essentially having just uh, 8 vassals, but the AI cannot cope with that. They simply cannot cope with that. And because of that, I honestly think the setting shouldn't even be in. It's just like, it's not good for them. It's really bad for the AI. Maybe even making things considerably easier. I don't want to settle on that yet because I haven't decided, but my god, it is a different experience from what you would expect here, I think. Ah, and look at that. Everything has come tumbling down for the Satrap Gulru of the Zunbil Satrapi. You know, his alliance, of course, over here in Transoxiana is gone. And he is currently being attacked for Kabul. I don't really care for that. What I care about is... Oh, that is something that I do care about. If I could force Vassalize him, I mean, that would just be... That would be tremendous. That would be gigantic. Yeah, I think we're going to do that. I think I'm going to force vassalize Satrap Gulru of the Sunbil Satrapi. And then, I mean, that is just so much more land that all of a sudden I would be holding. So, let's force vassalize this guy. It also means that nobody will actually come to his aid, seeing as, of course, it means, you know, there is no holy war going on. Let's clean this up. Let's cross, you know, the Hindu Kush and let's make this happen. And I have a fever. Of course I do. Oh. And I actually died. Are you kidding me? He died of severe stress. Yeah, okay, that, that does make sense. We we weren't the healthiest fella. We're now 13. We're Shahui. Uh, I need a new guardian. I am also Saka, so that is really nice. I have cancer. Man, this is... This is an odd, odd playthrough. And I don't have anyone that is actually good with diplomacy and at the same time also the right religion. But sure, you can educate me. It doesn't really hurt me, does it? Now, we are looking at a situation where I probably actually want to go... And auto stop plots, at least until I grow up. I like having them running around, but probably not right now. I can't give Gujarat at all anymore to anyone that is uh, of my family, can I? Do we have any other male member? I don't think we do. Wow. Alright, so we are at war with uh, Zabulistan, with the Zunbil dynasty. I still want to take it over, of course. I am Saka, I am Nestorian, I have cancer, I'm arbitrary, I'm an idolizer, I'm ruling and I'm clubfooted. I am horrible, and I legitimately, and this is the worst part, if I were to die right now, I would not be able to actually hand anything over to anybody, because this title is agnatic elective, meaning I legitimately cannot go and, well, I mean, do anything with it, you know? If, if you think about it, I legitimately cannot make anything happen here until I have a son or change the law of the land. In this case, of course, the law of... Uh of the crown. Now, the way I see this, we need to win this battle. I don't know whether we will. They have 2.4k troops coming. They have a decent amount of money. Uh, let's just take a look at this battle. This will determine how the early years of our leadership go, I think. Ooh, yeah, that's a rough one. But we get reinforcements, and the reinforcements actually turned it for us. Oh, that is so significant. 
Yeah, we, wow. That was just, the mountains here really carried us. And I assume it were, those were the mountains indeed. Oh, and interesting. I'm actually becoming a devout, zealous Nestorian. As I grow older, I increasingly find that my faith is a true fountain of strength. Nice. I'm 14 years old. I'm going to be a diplomat. And most importantly, I'm actually, honestly, I'm really good, except for the cancer, of course. But not everything can be perfect. This is pretty decent. I, I endorse this for sure. This does give me hope that this will be a good ruler. And I'm trying to bait the Zunbil dynasty into a fight here because that would definitely settle it. And then we can effectively call it a day. And oh god, he just forced someone into their factions. But yeah, we'll see how it goes. It doesn't look too, uh, too important here. If they do rebel, I mean, I have money. I should be able to resist them. And we should be able to clear that out. At least I hope that we will be. And there you go. So the Zundel War is over. So far, so good. That's a huge expansion. Doesn't do anything for us when it comes to the topic of, you know, founding an empire. But does a lot for us when it comes to the topic of simply looking cool. Now let's go and destroy these rebels. Uh, I don't really care about any of this stuff. That's all all right. Uh, this is looking pretty good. I mean, it's not, you know, too good. Uh, too good. Again, we are in a position where I'm effectively, you know, a child. Even if I am 16, I won't be able to inherit unless I get a son. Uh, but for the moment, I mean, I'm doing fine and I'm quite happy to see it. Oh, this is just unbelievable. So these guys, and it's a lot of them. These guys are all rebelling against me for independence. Now, I will tell you. I'm not going to be blackmailed here. This isn't going to happen. My dear friend. Do you have 1,000 troops? What? No, that can't be right. Wait, what? Wait, am I... There were, there were more people in that independence faction than are now actually rebelling. I don't know how this happened, but this is bad news for you, my friend. <laughs> this is really bad news for this guy right here. And I mean, at the end of the day, they do deserve it, just for the record. They completely deserve it, but I don't understand how this... <laughs> I've never seen that. I was ready to fight that rebellion either way, but with the fact that barely any of them actually rebelled, I mean, this is a clear victory. You're done, buddy. I think only he actually rebelled. Like, he rebelled as the lone person. They trapped him. Was this, was this just a literal trap? Because it certainly strikes me as such. And I've grown up. Let's take a look at this. I'm, you know what, a charismatic negotiator. I'll take it. I hate my former guardian, I suppose I'm Uncoth and I need to marry. And oh my god, just as I'm destroying this rebellion, sunset invasion. <laughs> Thousands of exotic ships have arrived in the coast of Aquitaine, spewing out numberless hordes of ululating warriors in weird armor, sporting feathers and bone. These invaders from beyond the sea, uh, uh, the sunset worship hellish demon gods, sacrificing the populations of entire towns and on altars erected on top of pyramid-shaped wooden edifices. It's in Nahua. Yeah, it's again, it's going to be the same thing. Why is it always like this? It's just going to become... Once she dies, it's just going to be a Sunni Bedouin Empire. Every time. And she has 84,000 troops. I'm pretty sure she's unstoppable. Because of the quarter domain limit and vassal limit. And this is a... This is going to be a rough one. <laughs> oh, this is going to be a very, very rough one, let me tell you. My god, I don't know where to begin with this. This is an odd playthrough. I don't even know how I'm going to face China, I'll be honest with you. Facing China is uh, a great fear of mine in this circumstance. Not even kidding, it's a, it's a great, great fear of mine. Alright, and I'm going to end it here because this is a big war declaration. We have Caliph Ali declaring war against us for Sistan. Now, we don't really need Sistan, I'll be honest with you. Sistan is not vital to me or my plans because, most importantly, I mean, we literally do not need it for this achievement. But I will not give in. Caliph Ali the third, the silent. You will not win, even though you are, of course, the Shia Caliph. Um, he has 17k troops. Will we win this? I mean, honestly, probably not. But I'm going to do my best. We have money. We have the potential to do this. And I'm going to see what I can uh, what I can get done here. But that is something for the next episode. I don't, I don't even, I don't even know, man. This is, oh, this is just, this is madness. It's fitting, isn't it, for the last second to last, I mean, playthrough in Iron Man in CK2. Absolute madness. And as weird as this playthrough is, isn't it perfect that this one is so weird and at the same time the penultimate Iron Man playthrough in CK2 on this channel? I think this is a worthy send-off already. Now, with that being said, I want to thank the members of the channel, namely the Barons Aaron, Stefan, the Richest T, Snywolf, Thomas, Mitchell, MFA, Florian, Dan, the Musielago, Jacob, Rex, Romanorum, Falling Phoenix, Eterna, then of course also the Counts, Shifty, Wombat, Kazan, and Lachlan, and last but not least, the absolutely beautiful Dukes, Suspe uh, Suspicious Duck, Nathan, Jack, Kenneth, Nexo, Goodfield, Eric, Aiden, and then the newest member, Kiriana. Thank you so much for becoming a member and supporting the channel. Uh, again, Kiriana, thank you so much. With that being said, I will see all of you later. Alligator.